we're like changing the world <laughs> one blowout at a time and giving women this amazing confidence. Hi, I'm Ali Webb, founder of Drybar, and you're watching Project Luminary. You are a true pioneer in the beauty industry. As the founder of a $100 million empire, you've turned the art of the blowout into a booming business and a nationwide phenomenon. Take us back to the early days. What was life like before you created Drybar? I was born with naturally curly hair, and that's really where it all started. I was kind of a little bit lost out of high school and didn't quite know what I wanted to do and eventually went to beauty school in my early 20s and became a professional hairstylist. But I always loved the styling part and I loved getting through a haircut so I could see it come to life. And I felt like that was really my strength. So right before Dry Bar, I was staying at home with my kids. I was looking for a reason to kind of get out of the house and do something for myself. So I started a mobile blow dry business. I was running around town blow drying all my mommy friends and then I'd you know, run home to get my kids from school. I wasn't really making any money, but obviously it was very serendipitous because it really is what gave me the idea for Dry Bar. It, it was in the middle of a recession when I went to my brother who's bald and knew nothing about hair. <laughs> he was a little like, huh, you don't want to do any cuts in color, just blowouts. I was like, yeah, no, that's, that's all I want to do. So that's kind of how it all began, and that was what I was doing right before we launched. You know what I love about your story is how confident you were about your idea from the very beginning. How did you know that this non-traditional approach to hairstyling would resonate with so many women? I knew it was different. It was untraditional. On a very small scale, I thought it would work. I mean, our first shop in Brentwood was eight chairs, and I think the first day we opened, we only had six stylists working because we were scared that nobody was gonna come, and we didn't know. It was, it was a big risk. Back then, it was like me, Michael, and Cameron, and I was like on the phone with the cosmetology board every day trying to figure out what we needed, and it was like such a big push to get it open and to figure out how it was gonna run. I truly would stay awake at night thinking if we could do five blowouts an hour and we're open 10 or 12 hours a day. I mean, just trying to make heads or tails of this. And then when we opened, we were instantly packed and you could feel it in the air that like we were onto something. New competitors are constantly entering the marketplace, yet Drybar always seems to stand out far beyond the rest. What is your secret to success? I was raised by entrepreneurs. My parents had their own business. I grew up in that environment where you treat everything like it's your own, it was their own. They would bend over backwards for customers and those values, I think, just kind of seeped into us over the years. You know, I learned the value and the importance of falling in love with the brand. When we were starting this, we felt really strongly about not being that competitive, cutthroat environment that as a client and as a stylist, you feel very intimidated. And so we love that dry bar, it feels really high end, but it still has that mom and pop undertone. Then there's all the other little details, the cleanliness of the shop, the fact that you can charge your phone when you're sitting. Even like working with our architect who does the spacing and acoustics and things like that, we think about all that stuff. What would you say is the biggest challenge you faced as you expanded the business and how did you overcome that? In terms of scaling the business, I think it's bringing on really great partners. I mean, I was actually very apprehensive about bringing on a professional CEO, very nervous about changing the culture of the company. I was just really against it, but it actually was one of the best things we've ever done. When you get to the point where you have over 3,000 employees and over 83 locations, and we have 3,000 points of distribution on our product, it's like, I don't know how to do all that, you know? And I don't claim to. And I always say, and I will say it till the end of time, like bring in people who know stuff you don't. I've learned a lot, but I've also learned the importance of having a really strong team behind you. When you look back at your journey thus far, what are you most proud of? I'm so proud of the fact that we are empowering women in this way that I never imagined. So many times when I'm in our shops and I meet a woman for the first time and you know, she'll give me a hug because she's like, where has Drybar been all my life? You know, and I'm like, I know, I know, I get it. The reaction of women when they leave Drybar, unbelievable. I mean, like a pep in their step and bouncing and looking at every mirror. And I'm like, this is amazing. We need to bring this to women everywhere. So we have. <laughs> I 
I'm kind of turning again. Are you good? Oh. <laughs> I just need like a. She needs some help yeah, here. There we go. Okay.